We've been testing lip SPFs for some time now, and I gotta be honest, a lot of the formulas are kind of bleh. For one, I have dry skin and dry lips as well, and they are all kind of drying on me. That's just the nature of most sun filters on your lips. So here's a chemist top tip. You will want to look for a formula that glides on well, but still has a bit of a waxy, foaming finish. And let me show you what I mean. Here's the IL for the Aquaphor SPF lip balm. It has high levels of beeswax and sunflower seed wax. This helps set up a robust film on my lips, and with this, I can actually layer a thin layer of just Vaseline underneath to help with lip hydration. The key here is just a thin layer of your favorite workhorse lip balm. I'm choosing Vaseline because it's what I have on hand, and because the Aquaphor balm body is much more structured thanks to the waxes, it can still create an even film that stays put reasonably well, even after an hour of sipping on my coffee. Now, let's compare that with Sunbum sunscreen lip balm. They've opted to list their ingredients in alphabetical order instead of the concentration order, despite making cosmetic claims, but that's not what this video is about. Well, this makes it harder to decode, but I do spy the wax ozonchloride as their main structural wax. Skimming the ingredient list, I suspect this balm just lower waxes and butters in general. It does melt on almost like an oil, which is actually not necessarily a characteristic I would recommend in a lip SPF. Here I am testing the balm neat. It doesn't taste great, but does glide on easy. But after just an hour of drinking water, taking meetings, it's definitely much more prone to smearing and bleeding on me, even more than the two-layer aquaphor Vaseline combo. So this is why, while we still want the lip balm to glide on well, it's important for it to have a little bit of structure to create that filmy, waxy finish that lasts. Hope this was helpful!